The investor here bringing you another independent analysis. This time we're taking a look at ticker symbol MSFT. That's Microsoft Corporation. The chart we have here in front of us today is a one day chart. Each candlestick on this chart presenting one day of trading. We go back all the way to 2014, January 2014 to be more specific. And as you can see, this is not an intraday chart. This is not an analysis on a day trade. Rather, we want to get an idea of the potential overall trend on Microsoft and some of the results that we can expect in the future. So today there was some interesting news that came out on Microsoft. Let's start out with the HP news. So HP Hewlett Packard said that it struck a six year deal under which it will deploy Microsoft's dynamics to thousands of employees to enhance its collaboration across marketing, sales and service operations. So there was some good news there and that wasn't all of it either. So we have that HP news little partnership there with Microsoft, a little collaboration, but we also have an investment news as well, some financing from Microsoft to this company, Sarcos Robotics. Sarcos Robotics is a global leader in the development of dexterous industrial robots for the use in an unstructured environment, and it announced that it secured funding from a group of top tier investors, including Caterpillar Ventures, GE Ventures, and of course, Microsoft Corporation. So we had two uh, press releases there on Microsoft, and we had a nice little uptrend on Microsoft as well, up 1.49% on the day. The overall markets also up about 1.47% today as well. The S&P index, 1.47%. Microsoft followed suit, and that good news absolutely helped that as well. Now, I apologize for the noise in the background. There is some maintenance going on next door. So there is definitely some noise, and I'm trying to talk above that now. So apologies for that. Anyways, so we have some pivot points to take a look at here on Microsoft. Let's discuss those. So four main pivot points on the chart. That first one we're looking at is $55. $55 right there, that top pivot point. Next pivot point down, right below that we have 5105, so $51 and five cents. The third pivot point down there, we have $47 and 85 cents. And the final pivot point at the very bottom of the chart, we have $43.75. So these are gonna be the areas of support that we can expect Microsoft to hold. Though I don't think it'll come down all the way to 5105, 4785, or 4375, but it is possible that we come down and test that $55 mark. Although I don't see that happening anytime soon, since we're up at 5705, currently trading there. Microsoft hasn't even tested $55 since, let's see, back in, well, two months ago, actually. Two months ago, right around the middle of the month. It was the last time it tested for the $55 support. So we're still nice and above that $55 support right here. The only thing that makes me nervous is on this candle today, we actually did dip down, dip down pretty hard at the start. Right at the open, shares of Microsoft dropping all the way to $55.61, but we had a nice solid close at 57.05. So that dip, that's why we have that wick of that candle pressing below that 50 period average. That's why I don't like to see. We see this entire area where we've been trending up. Microsoft was well above this yellow line, that 50 period average. And today it actually wick was below it, though we had a great close all the way back up there. The reason why we ended up testing that uh, 55, rather that 50 period average, is because the last two days, Microsoft definitely took a hit, falling from about 57.70, the high $57 area, to the $56 lows, where it came down to test that 50 period average. Today, it was following suit. It was almost red, and it was red at the open. So we actually opened at about 50, $56, came down, tested 55, 55-ish, and bounced all the way back up high of the day at about 57.20, the close at about 57.05. So a solid close. We can also take a look down at our RSI down here at the bottom, relative strength index, to get an idea of what the overall trend is gonna be doing. So let's highlight that area and take a look. All right, so you can see we went oversold. We went oversold right here. And since we went oversold, that's when we've been trending down. We have those red candles and currently trading right there. You can see the tip of this green candle from today touching that downtrending line. However, we've broken out from oversold twice, but that's not entirely bullish. Some uh, 
some analysts will tell you that when you break above that 20 period line on the RSI, not the 20 period line, just the 20 line on the RSI, that it's bullish. But as you can see, that's not the case. We did break above that line right here, and we still ended up coming back down all the way to where we're currently trading. So we have broken that 20 line again, but it's not bullish until we actually go overbought. So we want to go overbought. We want the RSI to be hanging out above the 80 line here. When we're above the 80 line, that's when we can see a sh sharp increase in price or even a steady increase in price if it hangs out above the 80 line for a while. So that's what I'd like to see. So in order for us to get back there, we're going to need a few green days on Microsoft. If we want to get back there soon, we'll need about two to three, maybe even four green days. You can see today we had a very green day and we're not even really to the halfway point. Our size is about 39. We need to get to 40. That'd be halfway to 80. And then, so then we work back up to above the 80 line. So two to three days like this more and we'll get above the 80 line. Or one really good day will put us above the 80 line. But uh, if we have another red day, we could go back to oversold. So we're gonna need some consecutive green days or we're gonna need one solid green day. Otherwise, that red will push us back down. We'll be hanging out in what I call no man's land, which is the area between 20 and 80 here on the RSI, Real Strength Index. And when you're in no man's land, that's going to be a rather neutral market, and we'll just see some choppy action on Microsoft, sort of like what we saw over here. Let me highlight this area. This area right here, very choppy when we were in no man's land, just kind of channeling around. And then... Let's see. Well, as you can see, it's happened multiple times here in the past, so no more reason to emphasize that, especially since we can't really zoom in here on the chart at the moment. So that's what we need to do. We need to get overbought over the 80 line, and we'll work our way back up. Areas of resistance on the way up, we could be looking at potentially, let me uh, define that for you one moment. We could be looking at a little bit of resistance right around the $57.90 slash $58 area on the way up. So we're not too far off from there, 95 cents more, and we'll find some resistance since Microsoft is actually approaching its lifetime high of 59.97. We're not too far off from that lifetime high. So very interesting time for Microsoft as we approach that mark. We'll see what happens. And if we're super bullish as we approach 59.97, you can look for it to break up there and potentially break out. As we can see, new investors starting to buy in and get in their shares of Microsoft before it continues creating lifetime highs. Similar to what we've seen in NVIDIA. That thing's been making lifetime highs for, well, months now. And you've seen people saying things like, you've seen people saying things like, uh, I don't want to buy NVIDIA since it's at a lifetime high, but you know what? The more they, the longer they've been saying that, the longer they've been missing out on those gains. So lifetime high could definitely be something to keep an eye out for, especially if it breaks it very bullishly, then we could see a breakout on Microsoft. So definitely keep your eye on that and we'll see what happens. Hope you guys enjoyed this analysis. If you did, please like and subscribe to this channel if you're not already and consider joining us at activeinvestors.net to trade with us in real time. We'll see you there.